I suppose in terms of thinking about an ordained ministry, I've, there's always been that sense that God had been calling me to do something full time. When, when m my wife and I first got married, my wife worked for a missionary organization, um, Youth with a Mission. And when we got married, we always had this view that maybe one day there would be this sense that God would call us into something full time. There was always the sense of full time in the in the in the outreach that we did in the places that we lived and in the jobs that we did. But there was this sense of maybe God was calling us to something full time. And actually a curate mentioned to us, he said, have you ever thought of doing this full time? To which my initial response was no. And my, my second response was, no, I don't think I want to. And then after about a year of this, we started really praying about it. And we went along to see our missions, um, the DDA, Director of, Director and Director of Ordinance. And we had a conversation with him and he talked about all the various options that there were open to us. And we then went away again for two years, my wife and I, and we were praying about it and we talked with people. And then there was this sense of, yeah, this is a door to push. This is a place to go. And the whole way through the process of exploring vocation, there was always this idea that this is an exploration. And if God said no, then that would be okay. Um, and when he said yes, there was this sense of, oh gosh, that's quite a surprise, because um, I quite liked being a teacher. I'd been a teacher for 20 years and I quite liked it and I quite liked the life that I lived. lived. But there was this sense of, okay, God, you've said yes, I need to explore this and continue with it. Someone was thinking about exploring the ordained ministry. I'd probably tell them this story that helped me. When we were praying and just thinking about vocation and what God was calling us to, we heard a wonderful story that encouraged us, which was about a man who was about to climb a mountain, and he was a big guy, not in good shape. And he thought, oh, this is going to be hard. But it was a very foggy day when he got there, and it was in Scotland, and they, the, the man who was with him was encouraging him. He said, what we need to do is we need to simply get to the next cairn. And he walked, and he got to the next cairn. And when he got to the next cairn, he could see the one after that. And when he got to the one after that, he puffed and panted and had a drink and thought, I've got to this point. And then there's the next cairn, and he went to the next cairn, and eventually he got to the top of the mountain. And as he stood at the top of the mountain, the cloud began to clear, and he saw where he'd come from. And he thought to himself, if you'd told me when I was standing at the bottom that I'd get to the top, I would never have done it. Whereas if you'd told me, because you told me, get to the next cairn, then that was okay. And maybe if you're thinking about exploring ordained ministry, there might be a point where you're thinking, I can't get to the top of the mountain but you don't have to. Go to the Ken, go and talk to your, to your vicar, go and spend some time talking to your diocesan director of ordinance, have conversations, pray with people, talk with people, and just think, this is just the next step. And if it's right, then the next Ken will be revealed, the next step will be revealed. And I think that's probably what I would do, is rather than thinking, gosh, maybe in five years' time I might be a vicar, think to yourself, oh, in six months' time, I've probably had a conversation with my DDO and began to explore what it means.